Thank you so much, everybody, for making it on tonight's call. I just want to, uh, first of all, thank Karen Yap, the young lady that you heard on the beginning of the call. She's actually our executive director at Georgia Rear, and I really appreciate all the help that she gives in making sure things like this are implemented and working well. And I want to give it back to Georgia Rear. I really want to give it back to the president, Mike Jacobson, the board of directors, and, of course, the executive director, as I said before, Karen Yap, because they've allowed this kind of training to happen. Um, this tonight is all about your marketing. We understand that Georgia Rea is about investing, people that are looking to become investors in real estate. But there's such a wide variety of people that come to Georgia Rea. Uh, you meet anywhere from doctors, lawyers, um, handymen, people that are in multi-level marketing. I mean, every type of personality and trade industry is at Georgia Rea looking for another stream of income. And one of the things that I noticed is that they're similar, um, probably, let me say, they're similar issues and why people don't move to the next level. So before I get started in explaining all of that, I just want to give you a little brief background about myself for the people that have not heard me speak before. My name is Wendy Lovejoy. I am the marketing director of Georgia Rea. I'm also a national director with a company called Five Links. I'm a business coach. So I wear a lot of hats, but the thing that they all have in common is one thing. And all of them, marketing is the thing that keeps them churning and moving correctly. And I have not worked since I was 16 years old because I realized early in life that having a job is not going to help me to live the kind of lifestyle that I want. Now, I've created my perfect life, and if you're on this call, I really want to encourage you. This is just going to be a conversation. It's going to be a lot about marketing and how to attract and not pull or push people to sell or, or, or to buy from you. They're going to be attracted to you. And how do you do that? The first thing you want to do is determine what it is that you want your life to look like in the next year, five years, 10 years. And hopefully you might live another 50 years, so look that much further. In Singapore, do you know that they do a business plan 100 years later, knowing that they won't be here in 100 years, but they give their children's children a, a, a plan to start with? And most people come into real estate investing, multi-level marketing, or starting their heart-centered business, and they look outside of themselves. They look and say, well, if Mary Smith is having success at Keller Williams as the top producer, let me do what she's doing. Or if they come to Georgia Rea, <clears throat> excuse me, and they see a top producing person who's in, you know, finding all these deals, closing them like crazy, they say, well, let me do what he's doing. And they never look at what they want their lives to look like. When I first got into um, real estate a few years ago, a few years ago being over 15 years, I had no clue about real estate. I was in the New York area, and I had no clue about real estate. But I did something. I went and I found a mentor. That's one of the main things you have to do. If you're at George Rea, find somebody that speaks to you and you want to imitate their lifestyle. Real estate success comes in so many forms. You can either build your business where it's going to look like a rat race, you're always chasing the next deal, or you can build it very calmly where you've set things up and you've now allowed them to work for themselves. And that's the kind of business I like. I like things that I set up certain tools and systems, and once it's set, I can forget it and just move on to the next thing. And that's how you learn to have success in so many different areas. When I first started in real estate, having no clue in real estate, the mentor I found was a gentleman, um, first was my broker, his name was Chuck McGill, and he owned an ERA in the Queens area. So I studied the ERA 
marketing system, and then I listened to my broker. But I wanted to take my business to the next level, and I found a gentleman named Mike Fieri who taught me one thing, keep marketing. You never run out of people that want to buy or sell if you are always marketing. And the first thing he taught me to do was to know what I wanted my life to look like. What did I want to accomplish for my household? So first of all, that's what you want to look at. You want to look at how many hours you're going to put into this. Why do you really want to do it? And you can't say because I want to make $10,000 a month. Money cannot be the reason. It's, 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 the, it's, it's a result you'll get. But you have to have what people call a why. Why? Real estate investing will simply be the how you get it done. But you need a why. And it could be you really want it for a better future for your children. You may want to own all the Highline cars you can find. Maybe you want to live in a gated community. Maybe you just want to pay off the house you have. It's got to be a really strong why. It's got to be a why that Les Brown says you'll be willing to die for it. You'll be willing to give up every penny for it. And so I, I really want you, when you leave this call or if you're taking notes, which I always encourage to do, so that when the call opens up for questions, you'll know the questions you want to ask. But before you do anything else, look at your why. Why are you choosing the vehicle you're choosing? I know there's some people on this call, you're not members of Georgia Rio, Um, you follow me on Facebook or you're on part of whatever I'm doing, And I encourage you to to look at the website, look at the information, look at the Facebook pages of Georgia Rhea. You may find that this is another stream of income you're interested in, but whatever it is that you're doing, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Because that becomes part of your story. Until people feel comfortable with you, they're not going to buy anything from you. And comfortable doesn't mean that they like you, um, you know, like they want to hang out with you, but they trust you to do business with them and have them succeed. Whether they're in a situation with their home or, you know, they want to market, you, you know, uh, a product or a, or a service and you they know you can help them to get that accomplished, But nobody can feel comfortable with you if they don't really know your story. A lot of people try to hide certain things about themselves. And in this season, in this time, people can find out anything they want to find out about you. So I always say if you've got dirt, you want to add that to your story. I mean, you don't walk around telling people everything negative about you. But if there's something that makes you who you are, you want to add that into your 30-second commercial or your elevator speech or your elevator pitch, however you want to name it. But you want people to get a feel of who you are immediately. So until you know why you're doing it, you won't be able to get that across. Okay? If it takes you the next 90 days to figure out why you want to use this as the vehicle or what it is that you want your life to look like in the next six months, the next year, I always say try to go at least 10 years minimum how you want your life to look like. And don't look at the fact that you may be short of cash right now or you're working a nine-to-five and you really want to do real estate full-time. Don't look at all of that. Look at what it is you want to accomplish. When you think of your brain, your brain works sort of like a computer. And whatever you type in is what result you're going to get. So if you type in, I can't do it because I got no money, I can't do it because, you know, I got to work 60 hours, I have no time, your brain is going to make sure that's what you accomplish. But if you type in, in the next year, I want to own three houses. 
in the next year. I want to be seen as a credible person in whatever industry you you choose. Or in the next year, I want to have done X amount of wholesale. You got to be specific with your brain. If you're looking to Google somebody or Google information, what you type in is the result of the information you're going to get back. So if you're not specific with your brain, you'll be passing up the very answers all around you, but you didn't make your brain aware of it because you didn't uh, program your brain with that information. If you program your brain that you're always not enough of this and not enough of that, that's what your brain's going to find. So again, really think about your story. Really think about what it is you want your life to look like. And then I want you to look at whatever you're doing, even in real estate. Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to work with? You may want to work with um, investors by finding them real estate deals and getting them the, the, the deal and getting out of it, getting a, you know, a few thousand dollars and then pulling yourself out of the deal. Maybe you want to work with sellers and keep the deal for yourself and resell it. Maybe you want to um, work with sellers, buy the houses and hold on to them and rent them out, but who do you want to work with? Whatever business you're in, including multi-level marketing, who do you want to work with? If, if that were your industry, do you want to work with customers or do you want to work with representatives? You've got to be very focused, and you can't be focused if you don't know your why. When I see people, and I deal with a lot of people on a weekly basis. I do a lot of networking events and I've got a lot of people I work with. And one thing I've learned is that the people who don't know why they're in anything get pulled into the next thing. A new speaker comes and says, if you learn how to present this type of information, you'll make a million dollars. Another speaker comes and says, well, if you write a book and then you start taking speaking engagements, you'll make more money. They stop what they're doing. They get involved with that because they're not focused. When you determine who you want to work with, determine it not by how you're going to make the most money, but who do you feel most comfortable helping? What area are they struggling with that you want to be the solution for? Are they struggling because they have a home that's about to be foreclosed on? Are they struggling because they have tenants that have not been paying the rent for a minute, what is their struggle and how can you help? And then in their struggle, what would they like to accomplish to get out of that struggle? Because some people could say, well, the tenants bug me, but, you know, I'll just tolerate it for another year or, um, I'm not really ready to deal with this, you know, to solve this problem. What is it that they're trying to accomplish? Number one is who do you work with? Number two, what is their struggle? And what is the solution they're looking for? And how do you solve that? And you answer that by saying what separates your service from somebody else. There's a million investors at Georgia Rea. I mean, that is such an amazing community to me because there's all levels of investors there, from people that own one house, people trying to get their first deal, to people that have over 30 properties, some, you know, free and clear, some they're still paying off. So what's going to make you stand out in dealing with a real estate investor that maybe you want to wholesale a deal to? This is part of marketing, and that's what this call is about tonight. It's marketing. What separates you from the other person? Now, what makes you similar is the fact that we're all at Georgia Rio. If you're on this call, maybe we're all on Facebook together, but we have some similarities. What makes you different? And that's what you want to put. And you want to do it based on the issue you want to solve. 
Um, how can I explain it? Well, let's say you wanted to take care of sick people, but you couldn't stand the sight of blood. Well, we know you're not going to be in the hospital. You don't want to become a doctor because you got to deal with blood. Maybe you're the person that will take the information so the person coming into the hospital can get the proper treatment, but you never go near the blood. So you definitely want to look at what separates you and what you're comfortable in doing. And because of what you do and how you do it, what will the person who's having an issue, what will that client, that customer, that real estate investor, that tenant receive because of you? And then after you share that, then you would ask the person, would they like to know more? So I just right there helped you create your 30-second commercial. And if you come to the Georgia monthly general meeting, we always take a minute or so and go around the room so everybody can do their elevator speech and share it. And you want to get as many cards as possible People get confused when they meet new people and they believe they need to stay there and have a full-blown conversation. That's not what an elevator speech, an elevator pitch is all about. It's really for people to get you to describe something about yourself and then they have to think, wow, that's exactly what I needed. May I have your card? Which leads me to the next portion When people get your card, what does it say about you? Because that's the first impression of you. And if none of this information we just discussed is on your business card, you're not going to get as many calls. I get people that I collect a lot of cards during the week, and when I look at the cards, I might see the name. Sometimes the phone number is so small I can't even read it. And I've got pretty decent vision. Sometimes it is so glary you can't read it because they wanted this really glossy card and it looks fabulous, but the information is not is not visible. The most important thing on your business card is your information. So you definitely want to make sure your name, your phone number, your email, and some sort of social media is on there. Definitely you want to be on Facebook. I meet a lot of people that say to me, well, I'm the older generation. I'm not on Facebook. That's, I don't have a lot of friends. I'm not on Facebook. That is like saying I want to own a business and somebody's offering you um, a, a, a location in the fanciest mall you can have, but you're telling them, no, I want to work out of my basement. Everybody you can think of is on social media and on Facebook. And if you don't want to do it, you definitely want to get somebody else and hire them to do your Facebook for you because you're limiting the kind of people you can get to. Now, I'm throwing a few things to you because I really want you to get just a little pieces of some things that we're going to be discussing if you come out to the Super Saturday on May 3rd. But I want to give you some quality content that will get you on your way to really marketing yourself correctly. It makes no sense to give out a business card if your business card doesn't get people talking to you. I have a business card and my business boot camp card, it says Wendy Lovejoy Business Boot Camp, um, turn your business into an ATM, automate the money. That automatically makes people say, well, oh, I need to talk to you. How do I automate the money? Whatever you're doing, whether you're a wholesaler, you can say something like, um, you know, I help people um, find the best deals and something in in that nature. But you've got to make you stand apart so that when people grab your information, It speaks to them without them having to talk to you. And then you want to lead them to something else, which is where your Facebook page comes in. If you are not on Facebook, I guarantee you you're losing a lot of business. 
But if you're on Facebook and you're only looking at it like, well, I'm on here just so I could speak to my friends and my family and all you post all day is what you had for lunch or what you who you hung out with last night and where you're getting ready to go today and none of it is business related, people won't look at you as a business minded person. And you definitely want people to look at you as a business minded person. So you either want to create a business page or a fan page. And we're going to talk more about this on May 3rd, as I said before. And if you come out and you really go on the website and you look at uh, the information about the uh, Super Saturday attraction marketing, you're going to get a marketing makeover. And I can tell you the marketing makeovers that my team and I and even myself have done in the past have changed other people's businesses. You can go to uh, Wendy Lovejoy Business Boot Camp on Facebook, and you can see some of the ways that we've changed people's Facebook pages before and after. And sometimes it's as simple as putting the right picture on your Facebook page. I see some people that say, um, you know, I sell houses, and then they put pictures of houses, but you never see them. One thing Donald Trump You can see him anywhere in the world. You know it's Donald Trump. Oprah Winfrey, you know it's Oprah Winfrey. Barack Obama, you know it's Barack Obama. Their pictures are visible. Martin Luther King, their pictures are visible. And so you want to brand yourself so people are feeling you're very visible. And when people feel comfortable with you, it usually takes, some people like to call it touches. Um, Some people like to call it views. But people have to at least see your face, depending on how strong you are. It can be as much as nine times before they feel comfortable with you. So you want to put your face on everything, but you want to put a professional-looking picture. You don't want to put a picture where you should have gotten a haircut or maybe you you know, your that beard needs to be cleaned up a little bit because you're asking people to give you their hard earned money. Whether it's five dollars, five million dollars, you're asking people to give you their hard earned money. Whether they're buying a cell phone from you or they're buying their next house they want to move in, you're asking them to give you their hard earned money. So you want to present an image that is always going to be working for you. That's the other great thing about Facebook. Once you put it up there correctly, it's a marketing tool that keeps working for you. Once you do your business card correctly, it's another marketing tool that will keep working for you. Once you give out that business card, there's a young lady on this call I spoke to a few months ago, I'd say maybe six months ago, before she really decided to connect. But my information was out there Um, touching her every time she got on Facebook until she said, okay, this is the person I want to work with. And so when you do your social media, you want to make sure people can see you, they can see what you do, who you help, how you help them, and why you help them. And then you want to invest in yourself You really want to invest in yourself. When you invest in some of the programs that are at Georgia, you're not investing in Georgia. You're investing in yourself and what you want to accomplish. And I'm always amazed at the kind of programs that are are put on there and how, um, like, just just open-minded Georgia is. We have every type of real estate training you can think of at Georgia. We also have upcoming, if you're into any multi-level marketing, just learning how to do different multi-level marketing. We're not sticking to one one MLM, but even Robert Kiyosaki, Donald Trump, they're all saying that real estate is one stream of income, Um, stocks are another stream of income, but everybody's saying even multi-level marketing is a stream of income. So Georgia is a place that's always giving you information, teachings. They're always teaching you um, different ways of, of accomplishing financial freedom. 
And so that's one of the things we're offering on Monday the 21st. The first Monday night mixer is going to be about five links. And so I encourage you, go on on, on the, on the um, georgiaria.org website, and you can um, sign up, come out. It's like $5 if you do it in advance, but at the door it's going to be $10 more. Invite guests. Come out. Get to see and feel the community and become a part of it. And one of the reasons I encourage that is because when you're in any type of business, you want to find a community, and I call it fishing. It's like a fish pond. The people you want to be around already are in this pond. Georgia is that pond. There's like so many people there. I, I, when I first came, I, I didn't really remember anybody there except for Karen. She looked familiar from years ago when I was a member of Georgia, but nobody knew me and I didn't know them. But because I was coming every week consistently, being vocal, asking questions, communicating, sharing what information I had, now people come to me and say, aren't you Wendy Lovejoy? And then they start talking. So you want to find a community of people. And if you're a member of Georgia, find which of the classes you want to become very familiar in. Um, there's deal makers, there's, there's, there's uh, networking events, there's, there's um, uh, land lawning events, there's I mean, everything you can think of, you know, you simply just look at the website and choose some classes, come out. In the beginning, you want to try to go to as many classes as possible and then look for the fish you want to be around. Again, if you wanted to, say, eat whiting tonight, okay, if, you're, if the pond that you want is all whiting, you definitely would not be sitting at a pond that only has um, – maybe goldfish, because that's not the fish you're looking for. But by going to the ponds and, and looking at all these classes, you get to see, okay, this is the one that's for me. No, I don't need this right now. But you will not be that focused if you don't start from the very beginning and know your why. Because when there's so much information, you can get confused and get pulled into so many different new things and get off course. If you know why you're in this, who you help, how you help them, why you help them, then you will only go to the classes that help you achieve that. If you're in another type of a business and you're listening to this just for marketing tips, you definitely would not be uh, a, you know, a cell phone salesperson and then all you do is hang out in, at the at, – I don't know, maybe a cooking show, that they don't need your – you're going to sell some cell phones, but not as much as hanging out in a community where you know people need to keep getting cell phones. So I'm hoping that makes sense. I like to tell stories because the stories will make you remember more of what I said than me just giving you the complete systems. On May 3rd, that's Super Saturday, we're definitely going to go over more systems, but I just really wanted to get across tonight that if you do not have a perfect client profile, customer profile, or whatever type of investor profile you want to become, you want to help, and you don't have your 30-second commercial, you'd be surprised how quickly business is just flashing by you. And when you come to the general meeting, you, the, the very person you need is right there, but you have like one minute to, to, to share your information and you don't. I love connecting people. I've met people at Georgia and they tell me what they're trying to do. And I say, oh, I know the perfect pe person. You need to meet Thomas Coleman. You need to go talk to the executive director in the front, Karen Yap. She definitely can help you. Be a connector. Because what happens is when you start sharing with other people what they need, they're going to remember you help them, and then they're going to start sharing with you what you need. They're going to be willing and, and very happy to help you. I know that marketing works. 
And if you're failing in any area of your business, your your money's not coming the way it should, you don't have enough real estate deals coming in front of you, it's because your marketing is not in place. If you're looking for more deals, get people attracted to you. You would be surprised when people are, are, are feeling comfortable with you the amount of information they'll share. And never have a conversation with people without sharing with them what you do. Talk about every avenue, but be willing to ask them what they do. And you'd be surprised the information they'll share. Um, A young lady on this call, I was at her house to talk to her about something else. And I happened to just ask her some questions about um, real estate, and she mentioned, oh, well, I, I need to get rid of this condo, you know, so you never know if you don't speak. Um, another young lady, we were talking about something completely different, and I said, well, I've been in real estate, I've helped some people, I've been in real estate over 15 years, and she said, I have a two family in Brooklyn I need to get rid of. And, you know, so conversations start a lot easier than if I were running around saying, um, I, I sell houses, I'm an investor, buy my house. Just have normal everyday conversations. And then on your social media, your Facebook, we're going to go into a lot more of that on May the 3rd. You definitely want to put things out there about your business. What do you do? And if you want to look at a great example of a Facebook page that works itself, again, go to Wendy Lovejoy Business Boot Camp. That, that Facebook is like a website. It's a mini website. It does all the marketing for me. And people will literally, I go on there every day and somebody says, I want to work with you. I want to talk to you. How do I connect with you? What's the next step? Because of the information I've been putting out there. And I want you to duplicate what I've done. You've got to know your why. You've got to know your what. What is the vehicle that you're using to get your why accomplished? And if you say it's real estate, then who in real estate do you want to service? And how do you want to service them? And you should be able to say that in 30 seconds, not a long, drawn-out spiel. Next week, when we have this call again, we're going to go more into your 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 30 second commercial and exactly what you should say and how you should say it. When you do these things, you will start capturing people's attention instead of forcing them or chasing them. When people are captured by your attention, I mean that you you get their attention, um it just makes it a lot easier for you to be able to share what it is that you have to offer. You have to become more of an expert of capturing the attention of people. That's called traffic. And then you won't have to invest in buying leads. Like so many people say, I'm buying leads. And then they buy these leads and they spend thousands of dollars on these leads. And sometimes they're lucky. They sell a couple of properties out of the leads that they got. But it's so much easier when you can say, you have a community or a list of people that have connected with you because they chose to. And, again, that's what knowing your 30-second commercial is when you give out a, a good business card and you can share your information at a drop of a hat. And never be scared to speak. I, I've had people that say to me, I want to be a singer, and I say, sing a song. And they say, but right now? Yeah, sing a song. If you want to be a singer, you would sing no matter what, 24-7. So if you want to be an investor, be able to tell any and everybody, I'm an investor. They don't know you just got got your your membership uh, badge at Georgia Rhea. They don't know that. All you have to do is just say, I am a real estate investor, and I help investors. I find them deals, and I'm a great wholesaler, and, you know, get their contact information. You don't make it long and drawn out, but you want to be able to share it any time. Your Facebook page is part of a system that you want to implement to keep collecting leads for you. And and these leads are free leads. 
Um, I'm going to be sharing some of the things you want to ask and some of the things you want to give away to get people more attracted to want to communicate with you on social media. And you don't need to give away a free house to get a lot of people to connect with you. There's very simple things that you can give away um, that will help you to really optimize attracting the leads, okay, and building your email list. Learn to position yourself as an expert, and, and these things will do that. When you can tell people who you are, who you work with, why you work with them, and how you help, that's an expert. When you go to the doctor's office, he has somebody question you, question you, qualify you to see if you, what you think is the issue is the issue. And then when you go in to talk to the doctor, he doesn't just start cutting you open or saying here's the prescription. He questions you some more. He tells you a little bit about himself. And this stuff that I'm telling you will make you look like the specialist, the doctor to other people, and they'll look at you as the expert. People look at me as a marketing expert because I'm always marketing. I'm always telling people how I can market and help them to grow their business. And everything I put out there is about marketing. There's different systems and tools that will make your business more automated. If you're buying leads, you got to keep chasing leads. You got to keep getting more leads. But when you're attracting them, it's so much more different. And again, if you're a member of Georgia, there's over 500 leads that you have right there, right there at your access. And if you're a business owner and you're marketing to people like that, that's one of the reasons I became a business associate at Georgia because I wanted people to have the opportunity to know what business I do. Um, that's a pool of people I want to do business with. But if they don't know what business I do, they're never going to even think of me as an option. So, again, you want to connect with a group of people that are doing what you want to help them with, and you want to get in there. You don't have to feel like you know everything. I have been studying marketing. I graduated from FIT. I went to fashion industries. Marketing was my minor. And then I took more courses, but I learned more about marketing by going out there and marketing. Marketing as a realtor and having major success in, in the Queens, New York area because of what I invested in marketing, going to Robert Allen and learning from him and when he came out with the book No Money Down and then the second book. Um, I can go on and on and on, but it's all been about marketing and investing and marketing and more marketing, and then I had more money so that I can buy a property, uh, including some really nice properties and some really not-so-great neighborhoods, but the money was there because I was always marketing. The clientele was there. People were coming up to me telling me about deals, and that's what you want to make sure happens. If you notice the most successful people, they do even more marketing. And that's what you want to look at your budget. If you don't have a real budget right now, at least invest in some really good business cards with the right information. Invest some time practicing your elevator speech and look in the mirror at yourself when you're saying it. Do you come off really hard? Do you come off professional? Can you smile when you're saying it so people feel comfortable with you? Can you look in people's eyes and and, and, and repeat that um that um that 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 thirty second commercial and not feel like you know you gotta look away because you feel uncomfortable with what you're saying. These are the things you you can practice and invest time in for free, but they'll bring you so much more results back. Facebook is free, but getting a really good professional page can cost you sometimes even a couple of hundred dollars, but it's an investment that will keep going and working and working for you. And in the meanwhile, learn how to do these things. And, again, if you come out on May 3rd, Super Saturday, early, it's going to be in the morning. It's going to be well worth you coming out. And then, 
again, as I said before, on Monday the 21st at Georgia Rio, we're going to have a money-making mixer, which is going to explain um, Five Links, which is a company that helps uh, the products that they have are things like cell phones, gas, light, um, all the stuff that people who own houses need. You know, and then uh, the compensation plan will be explained there, too. And next week, I am so excited. We're going to be talking about networking. Networking is another key thing that people do not do correctly. If you come out to Georgia Rio, you really want to network. You don't want to come and just be hanging out and and, and treat it like it's – a place that you just want to spend time, and it's a great family feel there. It really is, and you can get pulled into the warm, fuzzy feeling, but remember your why. You want to get business accomplished. So when you come out, make sure you talk to some people. You exchange business cards. You you get to create and develop some real, some real relationships so that, you and that person want to get to know each other. So we're going to be talking about networking next uh, week, the April the 10th, with Peter Pasternak. And you may know him from the A&E show, Flip My House. He's an amazing networker. And I just love his energy when it comes to that. And, you know, um, it's it's really fun speaking with him because we say pretty much <laughs> the same stuff when it comes to marketing. And I think you're going to get a great kick out of that. So before I go, I'm going to open up the call for questions and comments. We're going to do a quick recap. Know why you got into real estate. I'm sorry? Thank you. I think Karen is unmuting us. Yes, so you definitely want to know your why. Um, you want to make sure you know the what, what is the vehicle, what is it that you're going to do to help other people, what part of real estate are you going to uh, work with in helping others. So we're going to open up the call for questions and comments because this is a subject I could stay on the call forever and talk about, but we're not going to do that. We want to respect your time. If you have any questions on anything that you heard tonight, feel free to ask your question but please share your name and where you're calling from. Do we have anybody out there that um, wants to ask a question or wants to make a comment on marketing? Yes, uh, my name is my name is James. I'm calling from hi, Georgia. James. Hi, yeah, James. Hi. Welcome to the call. What is your question, please? Yeah, I just want to know, I mean, from your explanation and experience, and even the area that you mentioned in Queens, New York, I know those are tough places to do real estate business. But from your experience and what you have done in that area, I would really, you know, be interested in maybe working with you to know more about about marketing because I'm really having some problem in that area. So how can I, you know, be able to work with you directly even if I have to do some training with you? How can I do that? Okay, let me ask you this. Are you are you a member of Georgia Rio? Are you, you're in Georgia, right? Yes, I am a member, yes, and I'm in Georgia. Okay, okay great. So how often do you come out? Uh, because of uh, some kind of issue that I had before, I don't come out like that. Before when I started, I used to come out almost every time, you know. Okay, okay. so George, let me ask you this. Would you be able to come out on May the 3rd? Definitely, I'll be there. Yes, I'll so what I would, enc- I would, I would encourage, yes, I encourage you to go on the um, Georgia Rio website and uh-huh. if you pay in advance, it's gonna. I, I believe in saving money. So if you go and you and you pay now, and and we save your seat, it's gonna be less expensive than if you wait till the day of, and then you come to the door. It's gonna it's gonna cost you almost double. So um, if you're really serious about working together, 
just uh-huh. come out and I will definitely see what you're doing now and I'll be able to explain it to you at the event. And and like I said, you can go and look at my Facebook page and look and see at Wendy Lovejoy Business Bootcamp. Some of the marketing, uh, I share a lot of tips there, but I promise you you're going to get a lot more if you come out May the 3rd. I definitely will do that, and I appreciate that. I will come. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'll be looking for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else with a question or comment? Okay, last call. Anybody with a question or comment when it comes to their marketing? You can even ask if you're if there's something you're trying and and you feel that it's not working, feel free to mention it now and I'll be happy to give you an answer if I could. Okay, well, I, I then what we're going to do is go ahead and, and close out the call. I really want to thank everybody for being on this call. If you know somebody that can benefit from this information or if you want to hear the information again, it's going to be available in 24 hours for replay, and I guarantee you'll probably be able to see it on the Georgia YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to the Georgia Rhea YouTube channel because then you'll be able to uh, hear the information again. And uh, we really encourage you to take your business seriously. Set up your business like a business. It's a, it's a big difference in playing like you're a business owner and putting the systems and the tools in place so you can be a real business owner. Marketing changes everything. You get more customers, more members, more clients, when you consistently market. And marketing does not mean that you have to do it 24-7. Even on my Facebook page, I'm not on there all day long. Some of the things are automated where they, they, they get released at a certain time. I might go on my Facebook page 30 minutes, but, you know, it's it's set up. And, again, your business cards are very, very important. I'd be happy to look at your business cards when you come out on May the 3rd. So, again, I want to give it back to Karen Yap, our executive director. I really appreciate all the help that she gives in getting this stuff done. I cannot tell you how much I ask her for. And, and and she gets it done. So I really, really appreciate that you um, seeing that this information is really going to be helpful. And I want to thank everybody that took the time to be on this call tonight. It, it really means a lot to me, but it's going to mean a lot if you take one thing you heard on this call tonight and you implement it. And uh, when you come out to the, to the real location or you come out to the general meeting, Feel free to come up to me and ask me whatever questions. We are all there to help you. That's our goal at George Rhea. We are here to help you take your real estate investing, which is going to really help all your other businesses if you put your marketing in place. And so with that being said, this call is officially over. Have a great night, everybody, and we will see you next week on the 10th. At the same time, same phone number. Mm -hmm. And invite a friend to the call, okay? Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.